If you've struggled with color grading and can't quite nail the look that you're trying to go for, you're not alone. I finally found a simple process that can help me create the exact look that I want every single time with just a few clicks. And in this video, I'm gonna break it all down for you. I've experimented with so many picture profiles, Cine1234, HLG, SLOG2, SLOG3, you name it, I've tried it and struggled with it. And I've just struggled to get the look that I want every single time. Sometimes it works well, sometimes it doesn't, and it just gets really frustrating. But once I've understood a few key principles and started using the right tools and right camera settings, that has just changed everything for me. I've been able to consistently get the look that I want. In fact, color grading has become one of my favorite parts of creating videos. But before we dive into color grading, I want to give a huge shout out to Adobe Photoshop for sponsoring today's video. Over the past few months, the channel has grown from 1,000 to 8,000 subscribers thanks to some of the latest features in Adobe Photoshop that have transformed my thumbnail game. In the past, it would take hours and hours for me to tweak things to actually get the look that I want. But now with Adobe's new features like generative fill, I can change an image's style or background in just a few clicks. And the latest Firefly Image 3 model has made it even faster to get the exact look that I want. Another feature that has been a game changer for me is the distraction removal tool it has helped me to easily remove people and wires in the image so that all the focus stays on what's most important and that has helped my videos to attract more views and engagement it's been amazing to see how these tools have improved my workflow making it easier to bring my vision to life if you haven't tried out these new features I highly recommend it especially with these new updates it has opened up a world of possibilities for creators like us so First things first, before we even touch on color grading, we need to talk about lighting. Without good lighting, no amount of color correction or color grading is gonna save your footage. I've actually just recently discovered this, that the term photography actually means this, photo meaning light, graphy meaning writing or drawing. So photography literally means the drawing or the writing or the capturing of light. When we have good lighting, we probably have 70% of the job done for us. And once you have good lighting, the next thing is the capturing of the light. So this is where your camera comes in, your camera settings and all that stuff. I personally found that the best profile to work with is the S-Log3, especially when your camera supports 422 10-bit colors. Shooting in log helps you to capture the maximum dynamic range or the range of brightness from your highlights to your shadows. And this gives you more flexibility in your post-production process. Right, so let's dive in. So the very first step in my process is to create an adjustment layer. What you wanna do is you wanna first convert your S-Log footage to Rec. 709, essentially bringing that flat footage to normal, decent colors. This makes your footage look more natural right off the bat. Usually you can find these conversion LUTs on the manufacturer's website. Next, add another adjustment layer, which will be your main color grade. For my videos, I tend to go for a warmer look. So over time, I've just created my own custom LUT that I've kind of dialed in to how I like it. So chuck that on. And then what you want to do is you can adjust the intensity to however much you like it, maybe about 50% thereabouts, that's pretty good. And just make minor tweaks until it feels right for you. So this is a little hack that I do. I actually stack on another LUT that I like. I would create another color grade adjustment layer and then I'll chuck on the three strip LUT. That just helps the color pop a little bit. The greens and the blues and the reds, just a little bit of that because you don't want it to feel overpowering. And finally, your last adjustment layer. This is for your color correction. This is to make small adjustments for the look that you want. So this could mean reducing or increasing your contrast, changing your white balance, or playing with your shadows and your highlights for that soft cinematic feel, if you would. Now, this is the secret sauce that I 
teach everyone and it just changes their workflow altogether. So what you want to pay attention to is you want to dial in your highlights and shadows to a certain level. I personally found that the range of 60 to 80 IRE um, tend to feel the most pleasant for me. If you analyze some footage of the movies that you like, like for example this one I just pulled out, this is from A24 I think. I actually just randomly pulled this out and there you can already see their highlights are around the 60 to 80 mark and you can put it up and, and stretch it a little bit, it's, it still looks fine but having the highlights around the 60 to 80 mark just feels the best. I don't know, what do you think? And to show you the difference, here's a quick before and after of what this small adjustment can do. One of my favorite time savers I've started doing is creating a custom LUT. Instead of repeating my color grading process every single time, I've condensed my look into one LUT. So I literally just apply it in one click, make minor tweaks, and it's ready to go. Literally these days I just take 5 to 10 minutes and my footage is kind of 80 to 90% to how I like it. <laughs> That's game changer. And as a small gesture to some of you who have been here since day one, you can download it for free in the description box below for a limited time. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for supporting the channel. And at the end, I make small adjustments based on the vibe that I'm going for. Want a warmer look, push the white balance a bit warmer, want that sunset feel go for that or make make it colder whichever you want literally just slap it on make some small tweaks bada beam bada boom so to recap always start with good lighting get a good footage to begin with and then shoot with a lock profile capture the maximum dynamic range that you can and last thing secret source I personally recommend to everyone is watch out for your highlights. The highlights in the 60 to 80 area, chef's kiss. Try it out and let me know how you go. But that's my personal best pro tip. But I'm curious though, what is one color grading tip that you personally swear by? So that's my color grading process. I hope you have learned a thing or two. If you have any questions at all, feel free to drop it down in the comment section and I'll try my best to answer them. Again, the LUT is available for you to download in the description box below. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Peace.